Welcome to Biggest Truths. I'm Pastor V, the Senior Pastor of Gola Ministries. Today, I'm starting a series on Beyond Shadows, entitled Beyond Shadows. Beyond Shadows. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 8, from verse 31 to 32. It says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. What makes you a disciple? The continuation in the word. Verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth, the truth shall make you free. Today, we are dealing with uh, beyond shadows, beyond pictures, uh, beyond just things, we want to go to the real truth. The word, uh, we want to go to absolute truth. You know, there are, you say you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. There are four levels of truth. Four levels of truth. The first level of truth is when we talk about Truth in opposite to false, to error, or to what is wrong. Uh, for example, the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 5 verse 33, it says, But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, in her, came and fell down before him, this is before Jesus, and told him all the truth. Which means when she came to him, she told him the truth, everything that happened Truth in opposite to error or to what is wrong, to falsehood. But the second level of truth is truth in opposite to types, to emblems, emblems and to shadows. To shadows, to types. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1 verse 29. It says, Then the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So check this. Jesus sees, John sees Jesus coming, and he refers to Jesus as the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. But doesn't mean that Jesus was a Lamb, physical. It was a picture. It was a shadow. It was an emblem. He, he, he was showing them what Jesus had come to fulfill. Because in the Old Testament, everything was done. The lamb is what was sacrificed to take away the sin of the world. So Jesus had come to fulfill that. You see, people like Isaac, people like Joseph and Moses and others, they were a type of Jesus, but they were not Jesus. Your shadow is not you. Your picture is not you. So it's very much important that there's some truth in the Bible that were a shadow of the reality, but in themselves, they were not the real thing. But listen to what the Bible says in the book of uh, Colossians chapter 2 from verse 16 and 17. It said, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to to religious festivals. You see, there were a lot of festivals that they were doing in the Old Testament, ceremonies and many things that they did. He says, a new moon celebrating or, or a, a Sabbath day. He said, these things are a shadow of the things that were to come. Check this. He says, everything that was happening were, was a shadow of things that were to come. But he says, the reality, however, is found in Christ. The reality is found in Christ. So it's very much important to know, even the Old Testament itself, the Bible says, is a shadow. It was the shadow of the New Testament, which means the reality has been fulfilled in the New Testament or has been fulfilled in Christ Jesus. So which means you cannot just take the truth from the Old Testament without finding its fulfillment in the New Testament. 
The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1, it said the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the reality themselves. Oh, oh thank you, Lord Jesus. Then the third level of truth is truth referring to integrity. Truth referring to integrity. When you read the Bible in the book of Proverbs chapter 20, 20 verse 6, it says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. So a faithful man who will find. This, refer, this integrity, when we say this is a man of integrity, this is a man of his word, this is a true man, we are, we are referring to a person who walks his word and himself are one. Also, this refers to good character, a person of character, an upright man, a sincere person, a genuine person, a person of true motives. That's what we are doing. That's what we are dealing with here. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9, it says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all good goodness, and in righteousness and in truth. So this is a faithful person. When we talk about a person that is dependable, a person that is trustworthy, a person that is perfect, a person that of integrity, as we have said. Jesus himself was a man of integrity. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 16, the last part, it says, we know that these are the Pharisees, they come to Jesus and the Bible said they were coming to test him. But listen to what they say. They say, we know that thou art a true, thou art true, and thou teachest the way of God in truth. Check this. They said Jesus was true, but also he teaches the way of God in truth. Which means whatever Jesus was and whatever he taught, it was one thing. He was a man of truth. As much as I have talked about all these three levels of truth that seems to be so powerful, so amazing, there is another truth that is higher than all this truth. Because someone can be a man of his word even if they don't know Jesus Christ. But that is, that is not the truth that saves them. But there is what we call, number four level of truth, is what we call the absolute truth. This is true truth. This is divine revealed truth, which means unless and until God reveals that truth, you will not know it. Is the is is a revelation? Is the truth that God reveals to you? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. This is reality. This is a supernatural truth, but this is truth based on God's word. This is truth based on God's word. This is what the Bible says about the devil. When you read the book of John chapter 8 verse 44, he says, Jesus is the one talking, is telling these Jews, he says to them, Ye are of your father the devil, and abode not in the truth. Check this. The devil does not abode or he didn't stay in the truth. He said because there is no truth in him. The devil, there is no truth in him. He says when he speaketh, a lie he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and a father of it. He says when the devil speaks, the lie is his language. The, the lies are his language. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. But the word of God, listen to what the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 11. He says, he said unto them, this is Jesus speaking, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all things are in parables. He says when you have received Jesus Christ to you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. So this is the divine revealed truth that you will not know unless it's given to you by the Spirit of God, which means the Holy Spirit has to open your eyes to see it. You know, the word mystery, it means an, a secret that you are initiated to. It means a private knowledge. It means a knowledge that is given to you. Check, check what it's saying. 
He said, to them that are, are without is not given. Which means we walk in the world. There are some people who have secrets that others don't have. But if you have received Jesus Christ, you have an inside information. When everyone is crying, is wondering what is happening, you know that you know that you know why. Because there's a true truth that has been given unto you. Oh, this is the truth in comparison with the, the way God sees things. And th this truth of God's word cancels all other truth. For example, if you were physically sick, that is the truth. But that is a natural truth. That is a physical truth. That's the mental truth. But what's the divine revealed truth? The divine revealed truth, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11. It says, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. He said that same spirit, the Holy Spirit, will give life to a mortal body. Which means that spirit in you will give life. So that is the truth that cancels all other truths. So when you receive the word of God, when you walk by word of the, the word of God, it doesn't matter what other truths are there. The truth of God's word is the one that overpowers and cancels and overrides all other truth. It reminds me what in the book of Revelation, we see this church. There was a church, Jesus says to them, he says, I know your tribulation and I know your poverty. These people were poor physical. They were poor in material things or in finances. Jesus says to them, I know your poverty. Then Jesus changes. He says, but you are rich. So Jesus is telling them, you are not looking at, you think you are poor. You, are think, you think you are nobody. You think you are not making it. You are looking at the wrong things, the wrong thing. But when you use the mirror of God's word, you are rich. Because your riches depends on the word of God. Jesus himself is the embodiment of truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and life. What does it mean? When Jesus said that, you are saying, I am the way to the truth, which leads to life. Which means when you find Jesus Christ, you will find the way. And that way will lead you to true truth, will lead you to divine revealed truth, will reveal, lead you to the truth of God's word, which will give you life. And that life that was talking about there, it was talking about Zoe, the very life of God, the life of God which believers have made partakers. When you receive Jesus Christ, you receive the life of God. And that life of God is more powerful than any sickness, than any disease, than any curse, than any devil, than any force of hell, and anything that can come your way. You just need to be conscious of it. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, thank you. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. To eight. He said, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? He says, those that are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor, the, nor of the princes of this world that comes to naught, which means comes to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. We speak this wisdom. We speak this hidden wisdom. We speak this private knowledge. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Check this. This wisdom is for our glory. This wisdom is for our upliftment. This wisdom is to give the Lord the praise and the glory in our life. He says, which none of the princes of this world knew. For if they had then known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 17, verse 17, he says, sanctify them by thy truth. Your word is your truth. So the word of God is the one that consecrates us, is the one that cleanses us, is the one that purifies us. From, the word of God purifies us from unholiness, from any dead thing, from sickness and disease, from wrong thinking. It cleanses us, it purifies us. And he said the word of God is the truth. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory, glory, glory. 
I want to pray for you today in the name of the Lord Jesus that the word of God will find a place in your heart, that the word of God will find a way in you. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Psalm 119, verse 130. It says, the entrance of your word give light. It giveth understanding to the simple. When the word of God comes into your life, it will bring understanding. It will destroy anything that does not line up with the word of God and with the will of God. Maybe you find yourself now when you look at around you, it looks like you are failing. It looks like you are being defeated. It looks like you are not moving forward. But I want to say to you, we walk by faith and not by sight. What does it mean? We walk by what God has said. We don't walk about what is happening around us. We don't walk by the truths of this world. We don't, we don't even walk by the scientific truths of this world. But we walk by the truth of God's word. Which means when God's word comes, it cancels the sickness. It overrides that disease. It overrides that fact that looks like you have no money. That fact when you look at your future, it's like you're not making it. But I want to say to you, hold on to the word of God. Walk by with the word of God. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So hold on to the word of God, not what you see. Faith is what you have for your future. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you today. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 10, it says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess it with your mouth, you will be saved. Please pray this prayer after me. Say, Father God, I thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. Today, I receive Jesus I receive eternal life. I believe that you was raised from the dead and he is my Lord. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. Please go ahead and conduct us on the number that are showing on the screen. We have even some materials and some books that we would like to send you that they may help you on your walk with the Lord. Let me speak a blessing over you. I speak the blessing of the Lord on your life. I speak the blessing over you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every force of darkness, every false truth, any other truth that may seem to have been prevailing in your life, I come against it and I say the truth of God's word will prevail in your life, will prevail in all that you do. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I bless you. I bless you with your family, with your household. In Jesus' name, thank you for watching today. Bye.